Welcome to improving the security and licensing of your software using OSS Review Toolkit. My name is Sankalpa Menon and doing this talk together with Thomas Steenbergen. In this presentation, we will show you how we answer the question, which software do you rely on? This question is important as we see more and more supply chain attacks that exploit high impact vulnerabilities. Besides supply chain attacks, we also see sustainability issues where a single person is the maintainer for a package used by thousands of others. One of the solutions we adopted is to create software bill of material for our software, which you can think of it as an ingredient list on your Coca-Cola bottle. Software bill of materials are awesome. As ingredient list for your software, they provide you a lot of things you need for compliance. They can also help you draft a unified approach to security in your software supply chain. And if you're buying software, they can help you know which vulnerabilities are in the software that you're about to buy. That said, it may be difficult to draft an SBOM, as software is often complex and not all the package matter that is available. You might also see several false alarms for vulnerabilities for included open source dependencies that you might not even be using. It may also be very time intensive to trace down all the components and to train your developers. Also, opponents of SBOMs have raised questions about the effectiveness of SBOMs in preventing cybersecurity attacks. That said, we believe SBOMs are a step towards transparency and vigilance and can help anyone identify and address risks. One of the tools that you can use to generate a SignalDX or SPX SBOM for your software is OSS for Toolkit, or ORT for short, which is an open source project on the Linux Foundation. Besides being able to generate SBOMs, it has many other useful features, which is why we use it and contribute to it. For example, it has a very powerful policy engine that allows you to write licensing, security, or engineering standard checks on your software. Say, for example, if there's a particular license that you don't like to see included in your software, you can have ORT flag it for you. You can also use it to check for security vulnerabilities or to comply with your license obligations. It has built-in support for multiple scanners that you can use to scan the source code of your project or its dependencies for copyrights and licenses. One of those obligations may be that you have to provide a source code bundle. Well, you can use ORT to generate one for you. Overall, ORT has a modular design that makes it easy to integrate and customize it to your needs. Let's now see ORT in action with a little demo. In this demo, we'll show you how you can manually trigger an OSS Review Toolkit scan in GitLab and how you can integrate it into a GitLab pipeline file so that whenever you make a code change to your project, an ORT scan will get executed. For those who are new to OSS Review Toolkit, this is the main code repository. The readme of the project shows what does the various ORT components do and how you can install it on your machine. To use ORT in GitLab, we recommend you to use this repository. Following the ORT for GitLab installation instructions, we mirror the GitHub repository in our GitLab account. And it looks like this. For this demo, we are going to scan the fork of a MIME type repository. Once you have ORT for GitLab set up in your local mirror, click pipelines under CI CD and click the button run pipeline. Once you click it, you would see a page like this. To save some time for this demo, I already pre-filled the values. To do a odd scan, you have to fill first five values, others are optional. The first value is software name, software version, code repository type, code repository URL, and code revision that you would like to scan. Once the values are filled in, scroll all the way down and click on run pipeline. I already did this and here you see what you get when your scan is completed. To the, see the scan results, click on the odd scan. Here you see the logs of the scan and scan results can be found under job artifacts.
click on odd results and here you would see the various reports generated by odd scan for example the web app report this report contains all the necessary sbom information the first tab contains the license and the package information the revision and all the files that have been scanned the second tab contains the packages the version and the license information you can view it in the tree tab as well and when you expand it it would look like this If you like ORT to be executed whenever you make a code change to your GitLab code repository, simply add ORT to your GitLab CI YAML file. Add the include statement as shown here. Be sure to update the value for project to the location where you have mirrored the ORT for GitLab code repository in your GitLab account. Next, add an ORT scan job as shown here. In this case, we've configured the ORT scan to be executed in the test stage, and this pipeline defines three stages, build, test, and lint. Next, we've configured it to do two retries. This is a generic uh, option that GitLab has for every all the jobs. Uh, we do this so basically in case there is a network issue when trying to retrieve a code repository uh, for a dependency, uh, it will do another, uh, another run of ORT scan. So this will help us hopefully to get more successful uh, pipelines. Next, we'll define some variables. You can actually omit these and or for GitLab will use uh, default values, but in this case, we added them for demo purposes just to show uh, what, what you can do. So here we set the, the software name for the project in case it's, um, this is a useful option in case uh, um, the software name of the project is, is different than what is defined in the code. Next, we can define the software version and here we define the uh, code repository uh, to be scanned. Finally, we set the option uh, that ORT has to allow dynamic versions uh, to true. Basically, what it does is it allows scanning of projects even if the package manager requires a log file and the log file is missing. Next, we set the license scanning report. Uh, for people familiar with GitLab, uh, this is uh, exactly the same how GitLab's own license scanning uh, mechanism works. But in this case, uh, instead of using uh, GitLab's built-in license scanner, we're basically using the results from an ORT scan. So let's look how such a pipeline looks like when it's executed. So here you see it, the build test. So dependencies get installed, then they can test it, and here you see an ORT scan being executed. Next, you can open this result by right-clicking it. You'll see the logs, and for the results, you can click the Browse button, and then click on Ort Results, and then you see the various results files. Now, this might seem like a lot of clicks with this. Um, if you run Ort uh, for GitLab in a merge request, actually, it will automatically add a code comment to the top of the merge request window, and then you have a simple link directly to the um, this ORTS results. Now we will show you how you can use OSS Toolkit to generate a Cyclone VX or SPDX SBOM in GitLab. ORT for GitLab generates by default various reports including Cyclone DX and SPDX BOM for your software. Here it can be found BOM dot cyclone dx dot xml bomb dot spdx dot json and bomb dot spdx dot yaml the report bomb dot cyclone dx dot xml looks like this and the report bomb dot spdx dot json looks like this Thank you for listening to our talk. If you have any questions or interest in contributing, feel free to chat with us on the Orch Slack channel or reach out to us directly.